Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be going through the first part of building the windshield for the Automoblox T9 vehicle. Um, this is a revision on videos that I've made earlier just because I've gotten better an inventor. I've watched some videos of other people doing things and I've read articles about how professionals do things and I've talked to people. and I've... So the videos that I've created in the past are, are fine. You, they will get you there. But the ways that I'm going to show you in this video are just after going through the course two times and teaching this to so many students, now I'm ready to kind of maybe, maybe make revisions here and do it a better way. So we're going to start off um, just the same way that they ask us to do in the instructions. We're going to start a 2D sketch. I'm going to sketch on the XY plane. I'm going to need some dimensions here, right? Um, in fact, I just realized I don't have that dimension sheet up, so I'm going to pull that up real quick. Um, here we go. The dimension, I'm, I'm not going to show them to you, but I'm going to start off with the line and fully constrained down in the right hand corner is going to be key here. Okay, I'm going to start off with a green dot right here at the origin, so I'm locked in and that can't move at all. And I need to draw a line that's 3.04 units in length. Okay, now obviously I'm too close now, so I need to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose OK. Now the next step it tells us in the instructions is to click on and draw two arcs, and really it's a series of three arcs. We're going to draw the first one, it's going to start at the left hand side, notice it's green dot, and I'm just going to place it up here somewhere, and click, and I'm going to come over here and make it a little bit curved, and I'm going to hit click. There you go. Right click and OK it. Now, in order to get this to the correct location, this arc has three units of dimension. It has a total height from here up to here, height wise, it has a width from here to here, and it also has an amount of curvature. So we need to dimension all three of those things. That's, by the way, that's why you say three dimensions needed down here. So I'm going to click here first, and I'm going to dimension from end point to end point, And I'm going to pull off to the left. And the height here, it tells me, is 0 0.640. So now it's the correct height. As far as left to right goes, I'm going to click on the end point to end point. I do the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong, wrong one. I'm going to hit escape and get out of there. Okay, now I'm going to go up to dimension. I'm not going to dimension those two endpoints. I'm going to dimension from this endpoint to here, left to right. I'm going to pull it way up high, and it's 3.010. So now that's in the correct location, correct location left to right. The last thing is, is I need to dimension the radius. To dimension the radius, you actually click on the line itself instead of the endpoint. So I'm going to click here. I'm just going to pull that off just a little bit off to the side and click to place it. And the radius of this is 6 inches. So now you can see, there you go, it flattened it out, right? All right. Now I'm going to repeat the process. So I'm going to right click and choose OK to get out into my dimensioning tool. I'm going to go click and create a second arc. The second arc is going to be the one that goes from this green dot at the end of this line. So that's logged in, locked in. And it's going to come up in the neighborhood of here, right? It's going to be somewhere around there. Right click and OK. I'm going to do the same process, three dimensions needed. One for height, one for width, and then one for curvature. So if I click from here, and I go over here, and I want to get the height first. It tells us in my dimension sheet that that is a height of 1. Same process, end point to end point. Measured from the side, it tells us that the dimension is 2.550. So now it's placed in the correct location. I need to do the curvature now. So I'm going to click on the line itself, come right over here, and the curvature of this line happens to have a radius of 6 as well. So these two are fully constrained. Everything right now is fully constrained, which is awesome. Now it's time to draw this third arc, which connects. Okay, So I'm going to draw one third arc, green dot to green dot. And in this case, since the height and width are both locked in place, this time, instead of just drawing it close and then dimensioning later, I'm just going to go ahead and dimension this one right now. It's the only dimension that I have left. And the dimension sheet tells me it's 0.4 for the radius. So I click here. And it's done. Right click and OK. You'll see I'm fully constrained, which is awesome. Now, it's going to tell us in the instructions. This is a very important step, by the way. Okay. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to skip right to the to the extrusion and to fill it. I'm going to show you what happens and where the problem occurs. Okay. So if I get done and I click and I finish sketch, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. Right. It tells us here that I need to extrude a distance of 2.55. Now, I'm going to be careful here. I don't like the sketch being on the back of the shape where I don't see it. I'm going to click and extrude the other direction. I always recommend that you do that because if you ever need to go make changes later on, it's nice to be able to work on the front face that you're used to seeing. So 2.55 for the extrusion. I click OK. 
Now I need to fillet the edges and the radius of this fillet along this path right here is going to be 0.5. But you can see it already starting to appear. The problem is going to be this is considered to be one, two, three arcs put together, just like I drew them, right? And if I want to fill it, I really need this to be get considered as one giant arc from here all the way around the curve. And so I need to go make a couple of changes. This is not intuitive, by the way. I lead my students through this in class every single year because this is not an obvious step. But I'm going to click on Sketch 1 and go back into my sketch. In order to do this, here's what has to happen, okay? And the instructions, the written instructions are pretty clear about this, but, but it was put on the video, right? I need to go through and I need to delete this 1 inch and 2.55 inch dimension lines. Okay, now I know I need to be able to dimension things, right? But this isn't locked in place anymore. We need to allow a little bit of wiggle room. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this tangent constraint right here. If I click, what happens is I'm going to say I need this line to be tangent to this line. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say this line needs to be tangent to this line and it fully constrains it. What just happened, I'm going to right click and choose OK, and what just happened is it turned three separate arcs now and it still looks like three separate arcs, right? But now they're smoothed out and Inventor will consider them to be one long arc. That's important because when I go to finish sketch, okay, when I go to fill at the edges, it's going to allow me to do something that I wasn't going to be able to do without that tangent constraint being added. And that is to select this entire curve at once. So I'm going to fill up this side. I'm going to fill up that side. Click OK. We're almost done. We have one last step before I quit this video. And that's to go and shell from the bottom side. I need to shell this out so that it's kind of hollowed out. Okay. And in the instructions, it says go ahead and shell it to a thickness of... Uh, I think it's 0.07. You know what? Let's pull this up. I can see here, right there, the dimension that I'm interested in is 0.07. It's 0.07 thick all the way around the top surface, right? So I'm going to come here. I'm going to use the shell tool, which is right here. The thickness of my shell is 0 0.07. 0 0.07. Decimal point is kind of important. And I just click on the bottom face. Click the check mark, and you'll now notice that it's completely hollowed out. That's a great start on the top of the windshield. Hopefully that really helps you get going. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create then the bottom portion here that sticks out. We're going to get going on that. It's probably going to take two or three videos to get that done though. Hopefully this helps.